there's still like all furniture. Oh man. So here's the fucked up part I want to show you. Are you ready? I am. Okay. So this is between our houses, my house, Nanette's. Yeah. There's our window. Oh man. There's her window. Is if we would have looked through her? that window, we would have seen her. Now, is there like a spot on the floor? Yeah. Hello, 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 everybody out there in podcast land. Welcome to Stat Shocking Traumas and Treatments. And I'm your host, Karen Wickiam, coming to you from highly um, infectious Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And (laughs) today, can you hear that laugh? Does that laugh sound familiar? That is none other than one of my favorite people in the whole entire world, Erica. Hey, Karen. Hey, we barely, barely, barely get to talk anymore. It's it's sh- really shitty. It is really shitty, and I hate it. I hate it a lot. One day, we can see each other again in person. I and can't. I, will... I can't even wait. We're gonna dress up. Yeah, and it's gonna be like um, you know, where like you see two people on the beach and they see each other from afar and they run in slow motion, right? That's come with, yeah. With Except chariots of fire hear. music, and then we're gonna hug, and then we'll probably call each other names, and then carry on. <laughs> like you fucking we'll asshole! Walk, we will be running up here. We'll be walking briskly. Yeah. <laughs> you dick! I haven't seen you in so long. Yeah, you bitch. <laughs> Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! Absolute terms of endearment, right there. Yeah, those are. So, uh, of course, I always want. It, I, we always want to do uh, this together, but some crazy shit has been happening in Erica's life. And when she told me about it, I'm like, I know that you're tired. And we barely get to talk to each other, but you have to, have to, have to tell us on stat if you want to. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, okay. I'm like, yeah, sure. Why not? No big deal. Um, okay. I don't even know. Like, first of all, tell everybody, let, let, tell everybody how you're doing, Erica. I get stuff all the time. Where's Erica? How's Erica? I'm doing pretty good, actually. Um, I've just been working, 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 working. Um, Not doing much beyond that. Um, Just kind of being at home and, um, you know, just trying to stay positive through all this. I started painting, which is kind of fun. Um, Um, You know, just kind of doing things out of my comfort zone. Keep myself busy. You, would you say you're doing painting? Yeah, I'm painting. Like art, artistically. Yeah. So cool. I just paint. I'll show you. Well, nobody else is going to be able to see it, but you'll be able to see I'll, it. I'll be so able much. to go. Oof, you need some work, or I'll be able to go. That's. Oh my god, that's amazing! It's these beautiful, so beautiful flowers. Um, you know what? You'll have to take a picture of it and post it. That's that's beautiful. You're so fucking Thanks. talented, Erica. Good for you. Why, thank you. I'm going to, I'm going to post, um, I'm going to actually paint pictures of the cats just oh my God. because they're like, draw me one of my, one of your French girls. So <laughs> you got two French girls right there. <clears throat> two French girls. Okay. Oh. But did I tell, I told you that uh, we're, um, getting a Bernadoodle. Uh, yes. And I can't even deal. I and know. when is this book the doodle ready? We're going to find out in June. Um, I'm going to turn it into, not turn it into, I'm going to train it as a service dog. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so um, he's this, uh, he or she, I don't know if you guys know or have seen Bernard Doodles. Go look him up. It is um, a breed where it's half Bernard Doodle, half Poodle. And no, sorry, half Bernard Doodle, half Poodle. <laughs> Half, half Bernie's mountain, yeah. Half Bernie, no. Half Bernie's mountain dog, and half poodle, and it's they're just absolutely gorgeous. The most laid back, sweet dogs, but super smart and fun. But can just like you don't. They're like lap dogs as well, and they're perfect you, for. Um, um, sorry, are you gonna name Douglas or Sean? Well, I was thinking Bruce. <laughs> oh my god. Amazing. Bruce or Louie, but also Moose would be a really good name for a dog like that. For sure. But Bruce is amazing. Like, you've yelled that at a dog. 
Yeah. Bruce. Middle name. <laughs> Bruce. Eric. Oh, you're cutting out a bit. I hate oh, Skype. Next time I'm going to ask if you t if you could um, download Zoom. It's so much better. I um, have Zoom, actually. Okay, we'll have to do that next time. All right. And we'll have to, like, not wear our pants and stuff and do all the, like, shitty stuff that people do when they're on Zoom and meetings. You Who's I'm wearing pants now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. Okay. Let's get into this story. Erica, I'm just going to leave it to you. Just, just, just do it. You guys are going to be like, holy shit. When Erica told me if it wasn't Erica, I'd be like, I don't believe a goddamn word of it. But because it's Erica, I 100% know this is true. So go. Okay. So about just over a month ago. Um, so let, let me, let me back up a little. So we have this neighbor. We call her Nanette. We live beside her uh, th about three years now, just over three years. <clears throat> So she is the type of neighbor who's a little bit um you want to you want to kind of be on her good side type deal. Uh friendly enough. Um she's kind of uh, a recluse a little bit and anyways. So about yeah, over a month ago, a month and a half ago, um somebody had noticed a bunch of Amazon parcels on her doorstep. So they called in for a wellness check with the police. Police came uh broke the window um, of her door, the side door. So our side door faces her side door. So um, they broke the window um, and trying to gain entry. And she stuck her head at the second floor and said, what are you guys doing? I'm fine. Blah, blah, blah. Leave me alone. So we were like, she's fine. She's usually like this. Like, this is normal for her. She's like, there's nothing going on. Like, you know. So that was fine. She has so a, a about, history of possible mental illness yeah i was gonna say maybe because she's she had a lot of paranoia and like odd behavior yeah she was paranoid schizophrenic okay all right uh so basically and um, you would be the perfect three... neighbor sorry i'm just saying like you would be the perfect neighbor for her because as much as you would sort of chuckle at some of the stuff you're very compassionate absolutely like, yeah. i mean yeah absolutely I, I i saw some of the strange things that she would do in terms of outdoor on property stuff and you're just like yeah whatever that's okay you know what it's okay yeah it, it, it's and i know you, you looked know, out for was, her too yeah like she you know she's gonna live her life too you know and yeah. a lot of neighbors actually helped her out um the you know the the problem is she um was left uh a trust a very substantial trust so she was able to buy this house and it's kind of like because she had so much money um, and she she didn't want the care because she was paranoid yeah. about the care. So she didn't receive care and, and nobody cared. Yeah. And that's another thing. She didn't have family or anything. Um, her parents were already passed away. She yeah. was estranged from her sibling, the only sibling we knew about. Um, so anyways, back to the story. So about three weeks go by packages start to pile up again there's about you know 30 of them 40 wow. of them on our porch so again um, a wellness check was called and the police came and uh you know just watching the what was happening and them actually gaining entry they broke down the side door wow and the whole door this time and um and i'll tell you why they had to take the door but i'll i'll tell that after because she so anyways, they, they gained entry and they were, they came out and then they went back in and then they came out, then the ambulance left. And then it was just strange because it was like, usually she wouldn't let them in and out like that. She wouldn't have let them in and out like that. Mm -hmm. So I went out and I said to one of the police officers, um, excuse me, I just wanted to know if, um, our neighbor's okay. And he said, uh, how do you know her? And I said, oh, I'm the neighbor. I've lived beside her for three years. He's like, do you know her name? And I said, yes. So I said her name. And he said, okay, um, I just want you to know that your neighbor is deceased in the house. Yeah. And it was just kind of like, what? Like, how? Like, I don't understand. And um, so anyways, he, he 
kind of said, well, uh, you know, we're trying to figure that out, you know, if she had any family. And so I was like, oh, her parents are deceased and, uh, you know, all these different things. And doing your so best I, to fill them, did, fill them in on um, what you knew. Right. Um, yeah. So I, that's that's exactly what I did. I have filled them in on what I knew. I actually went on um, her Facebook to see. Um, I did know she had a Facebook. They didn't know um, to see if there was any family members matching her last name stuff like that um and then uh you know it was kind of like in and out for them um they went in uh, one of the officers brought in a camera to take pictures and i was just trying to help them um try and figure out a next of kin somebody to be able to get a hold of um we ended up finding an uncle um of hers that lives about an hour away so um they ended up contacting him um but before that that took about three, four hours. So Jeez. prior to that, um, the officers asked me if I would mind identifying her. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, so I'm, I'm um, I did like, agree. Uh... So, yeah, I did agree. Um, now that they did say, um, you know, it was going to be kind of like a pretty gruesome scene. So, um, I, you know, I, I prepared myself and, uh, why did they I say it was going to be gruesome? Pardon? Why did they say that it was going to be like, not so good? Uh, just because she, um, she didn't have any clothes on. Yeah. But how, and, how long had she been in there for? Uh, she'd been in there two weeks. So she had possibly been deceased for two weeks. Yes. Okay. So, um, I did go in. I, I put Vicks under my nose and put a mask, put a mask on, and I, I went in, and um, she was kind of like slumped over herself um, at the corner of the couch. Jesus. Now, the crazy part of that is, is uh, our living room window faces one of her living room windows, but we have um, like curtains, like shears, and then curtains to the side of it right there and um the crazy thing is if we would have looked through that window at night at any given time we would have seen her oh my goodness but we faces you know windows but you know what like who looks into people like you're not a creep right well i mean not this kind of creep you're other kind of creep yeah exactly like i it, you just don't look you know you don't go so, hey let's see what they're doing this evening exactly <laughs> oh man so let's get back to, um, she had been deceased for two weeks and you, have you like, I mean, maybe a silly question, but have you gone to a home where someone had been deceased before? Yes. But not to this degree. Not extent. So, um, so tell us you walk in. I just, I could smell it, everything right through my mask and the Vicks and everything. Um, it was pretty strong. And Are you um, making coffee right now? I they pardon? Are you making coffee right now? Yeah. <laughs> I just want to explain everybody because I've asked the people like, you know, sometimes a background noise and they're like, No, we like to, to hear the the real life going on. Yeah. So um I went in and um the smell was atrocious and, and the police just got permission to open the windows. So they opened the windows and, uh, she was in her living room. Um, she was naked. Um, she was kind of slumped over herself at the side of the couch. And, uh, the crazy thing was, and you know, like I was like, yes, it's her. But the crazy thing was her, one of her cats, she had two cats. One of her cats was laying dead beside her. Like it was sleeping. Oh man! Like it, it, it looked like it was just sleeping, but it was deceased as well. And I said to the, the only thing that came to my mind after I said, yes, that's her was she's got two cats. She's got another cat. And they said, are you sure? I said, I'm positive. She's got another cat. Um, the cat that's laying beside her, I knew its name. And uh, I said, that's that one. And then there's another one and this is its name. So the police were here until like the nighttime, the coroner came, everything. It was back and forth. They asked us some questions. Um, they ended up leaving, but the door was still broken. 
So they put a plywood, like um, some neighbor offered them wood to kind of like cover the window of the door and, and, and it, we closed it. And I said, you know, I mean, we'll do our best to watch it. So nobody goes in there, but that cat is still in there. And they had was looked, she they still said, in there? Look. No, they she had they removed, removed the body at the time, her body. But they moved the dead cat. So, okay. What did they tell you what happened or what they think happened? No. So when I first went into the house, there was a um, kind of like a little pool of blood. Um, and it, the, the the hard part is, is um, it was at the front door. Now, just to give you guys a little bit of um, insight into the house, um, I, we've been in our house many times, um, helping her carry things in, stuff like that. Um, now, she was very, she was very, 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 like she was tidy. Um, she had beautiful things in her house, in her home, um, everything like that. Now, uh, during COVID is when things got a little rough. She was, she was ordering constantly from different places, Canada post, FedEx, UPS, you name it, Purolator. Like she was getting 30 shipments a day of stuff. Wow. Yeah. Holy shit. So I would expect that she would be like, she's a hoarder or no. Um, she became one okay. and that's so I wonder the if her mental health started to um deteriorate uh she was doing more of these things yeah so during during covid i think that's exactly what happened she was just so um you know just so like oh my god yeah. what's happening like i i don't know how to you know yeah. deal with this just like order 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 get as much as i can yeah so anyway her house was okay so she had locks on everything her fridge um every door you could think of and when i say locks like there was like padlocks um on her fridge uh on the um cupboards the drawers every door had a lock on it now her front door was basically you could get in from the outside but you couldn't get out from the inside okay all right but it, Okay. Okay. So it, what it appeared to look like was that this was after the autopsy and everything um, was that she, there was something in her system. We don't know what it is, um, but it, it was kind of like, an, it was accidental. So you think that so maybe she, 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 she oh, like accidentally overdosed? I don't even think it could have been an overdose. I think it's, it's just that it kind of something made her a little loopy. She tried to get out the front door. She okay. fell down those. We have two steps down to our, our front door. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it looks like she had fallen down those front steps and hit her head. Oh, jeez. It looks like she got up the two stairs and then fell again. Okay. And, and went and sat on her couch. and That's when she died. So um, basically, um, anyways, they had they'd closed the door. <clears throat> um, I was like, Oh my God, this cat, I had gone to work that night. And in the morning when I came home, it was probably like six, six AM. Um, this is the cat saw, that lived. The cat that or, lived was or, in the window. Okay. So I took a picture of it and I was called up the officers and said, listen, um, they had left me their phone numbers. The cat's in here. So the cat that I was going to say the cat police, the police came, <laughs> um, back and you know what I got to say, I got to give props to these officers. Every officer I met that day and the next day, amazing people. Okay. Especially the That's ones good. that were trying to deal with this poor cat. Um, so they went in to the house and they looked around and I gave them um, a crate and I gave them food because this poor cat hasn't eaten in two weeks. Okay. Well, so see, when you, when you say that, it made me go to like a really bad place thinking that. And it, that, like first of all the cat that died beside her like i just think it just makes me feel sad all around because it's like this cat just stayed with her no like yeah it's like it knew and it wouldn't leave her side so that just yeah. that's so sad um in a, in a weird way kind of beautiful at the same time am i am i strange in saying that like no, it because just, it's like it didn't let her die alone and that was and then the know, other cat, it was almost like the other cat was keeping 
watch or vigil of some sort. And the fact that it didn't, uh, you know, being starving, you know, what animals can do, uh, that it, yeah. And it, and it didn't. And that's the, the pretty cool thing. So the officers gave me permission to enter the house to try and get this cat. Anyways, you by uh, yourself? so I had, I had got, um, a hold of a local animal rescue. When you went to the house, were you in it by yourself? Yeah. How'd that feel? A little eerie, to be yeah. honest. Um, you know, the floor hasn't, hadn't been cleaned and stuff and, uh, yeah. It was, it was a little eerie. So there was a, like, oh. okay, I'm, I'm going to go there. What condition was she in? Now, you don't have to answer this. Um, She was deteriorating. Okay. Uh, and so what happens when you die, um, kind of your your everything settles. Um, I'm trying to say it in the nicest way possible. No, no. I, I knew uh, you would be delicate. That's why I was sort of like, you know. yeah, it's kind of like you, um, there's a, almost like a little pond around the body. Uh, how, how are you Erica? Because I'm okay. This is traumatic. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, um, I'm okay. I, uh, it took me a couple days. Like I was just like, you know, had to kind of, come to terms with it in my own head and stuff, but I'm okay. Um, and I mean, you being a paramedic, um, you probably have this ability to turn stuff on and off, right? Yeah. Because you see horrific yeah, things so, in living people. Right. It maybe transfers in dealing with this tragedy. So that was one of the first things I thought was like, how are you? Because yeah, nightmares you know and oh. all that kind of stuff. My focus, it was like the cat was my focus. Like, I was like, I got, I'm saving this cat. I'm saving this cat. So it helped you uh, sort of come to, yeah, okay, all right. So and, uh, what happened know, with the cat then? I got a, I got a hold of a, a local um, animal rescue, and they actually um, gave me a trap because we couldn't find it. Every time we would go to look, this cat was like, it was like I was telling a, a lie of some sort, like that yeah. this cat didn't even exist and... <laughs> You know, I'm like, I swear to God, guys, it exists. So I ended up, um, we ended up catching it a week later. Okay. So in the meantime, this gentleman um, who was appointed by her lawyer's office um, had shown up, introduced himself, really great guy, um, was totally on board with catching this cat. Um, we actually, um, when he first showed up, we actually um, did remove um the body of the deceased cat and the cool part is um this rescue um actually took the deceased cat and had it cremated oh wow okay so this uh i'm just gonna say like this res like this rescue is uh is an awesome rescue if um anybody ever wants to donate to it it's team chelsea okay um and they they are uh, incredible so yeah, I'm going to we check them out. To... Yeah. Well, that's, that's really, really good to hear. Yeah. Were you able to is... help place the cat? The... Yes. Um, a gentleman from uh, work, actually, my, my work took him. And nice. I get updated pictures. And he went from, like, pretty skinny um, to he looks like, you know, like he's substantial. Like he's had a Big Mac and he's enjoyed it, you know? Oh, that's nice. Okay, yeah, what? so so this nice. guy adopted the, the cat. That's yes, he did. Amazing. Um, I mean, that part's amazing, but I mean, this whole story is just wow, crazy. Yeah. yeah, and you know what? It's funny. I didn't. I didn't at the time remember the second cat's name. Just the first one, and it was uh, Dakota. You said it right. Yeah, Sunny. And it was Dakota that said it, um, that it was, oh, it's named Sunny. So did it, like, oh, not, yeah. maybe it helped come to you because it heard his name? Yeah, or? it's crazy. And um, it was the gentle, as soon as we trapped it, we were like, okay, like, is it going to be crazy? Like, Barrel yeah. trying to eat us, tr trying to get it into the cat carrier. And honestly, um, got it into the cat carrier, 
pretty easily. He was he looked a little scared. Once we got him into the cat carrier, I opened it up to. I'm like, I'm gonna probably get bit, but I'm, I gotta try and put this cat, you know? Yeah. Honestly, he just closed his eyes. Like, thank God, I'm finally safe, and it was oh, pretty man. crazy. Well, I mean, Erica, it's incredible how you helped out like on all levels, and um... it, was, it was awesome, Karen. It was. It was. Uh, I'm so. The cat is so happy with. Um, my friend from work, like, so happy. It's unbelievable. So they found, he found uh, a new home, and they both yeah. uh, have new friend. <laughs> They're have each yeah. other's buddies now, it's right? All, he, yeah, he, he was basically like, he said to me, he's like, you know, I've been through shit in my life, and so has this cat, so we'll get along great. Oh, my God. That's like a win-win. It's That's that's mm-hmm. amazing. So It was awful. Especially this time, I mean, um, pets are so like and so important um they just they're just they they truly just unconditionally love you oh god yeah i mean i i got uh you know i lost sam recently uh, a couple months ago and uh and uh, you know these got these guys here are just the boys especially oh my goodness they're absolutely out of their minds running around playing and they make me laugh like there's some days where i'm just like you what know, is I'm just, I'm so done with this shit. And then they act like so ridiculous. And I'm just like, I, I forget about it. And, you know, I look forward to getting this new edition. And then, you know, my son, I, it's, he lost his, his bolt, his buddy, you know, Oliver. But suddenly. I know that part. I know. I, I don't, like, just suddenly he had a hard time walking. And then, you know, he was diagnosed with uh, bone cancer. And it was like, What? So he's it's crazy doing, he's how doing they okay. hide it. What's that? It's crazy how animals can hide it. Oh, you know, they're and so then stoic. Like all of they're just tough and they're stoic and they just want to be happy and, you know, um, and like my, my son was saying, like, you know, it's it's tough. He, um, thankfully, he works from home, but he's like, Oliver helped give structure to his day. It's like I had someone to take care of and he's like, if I was having a bad day, he would cuddle with me on the couch and that... you. Like that's just absent. Irreplaceable. It's irreplaceable. So, uh, yeah. Um, anyway, I went down a sad path there, but uh, I guess what I'm sa- I want to get back to saying is, it's like animals are amazing, and um, we're fortunate to have them in our lives. <clears throat> they're family. You know, we don't own them. They're they're family. I um, have to just add in a quick uh, short story um, as of to what happened to me right now. Oh. This is why it's so loud in the background. I just I want to explain to everybody what just what I just did. Okay. Okay. So, I was making a coffee for myself. I was like, okay, you know. In the meantime, I was like, okay, I drank that. Making another coffee. Turned on, put the water in, put the coffee, and turned on the machine. One small step I missed was putting a cup underneath the uh, coffee machine, the Keurig. Oh, that's what you were licking off the counter. That yeah, I did. Who <laughs> wants to waste? Please? Oh, so it spilled everywhere. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. So mm-hmm. I've just been in this short amount of time. I've been cleaning this up. <laughs> this disaster that, that happened. It's the. Well, you're you're just dis- you're distracted. Oh well, I you know I'm not now because the mess is clean. <laughs> um. Okay, I just, I want to talk to you about the other thing that we've been discussing um, that you told me about um, in regards to, it's COVID related. So a friend of mine's, um, a friend of mine. So um, I just want you to break down the family, um, like who lives in the house, the dynamics, all that kind of stuff. And go. So (laughs) it's uh, my friend, um, her wife their three kids and my friend's parents so there's seven people in the house and their ages are uh they range from 18 to 72 okay okay so um the whole house ended up coming down with covid now why do you think they got uh, got covid it was the variant the b117 variant oh jesus that's the worst one so yeah so thank you, uh, England. Yeah, I think it's the English one. Anyway, 
I could be wrong. Isn't it? Yeah, the UK version. Yeah. Um, so anyways, uh, what had happened was um, everybody kind of was getting better except for the grandfather. And he ended up uh, actually very ill and he is now in the hospital on a ventilator. Um, and I, you know, I think that this just solidifies, you know, do what people are saying to do. Stay home. Uh, you know, if you don't feel good, do not go to work. If you don't think you feel good, if even if you have a, something that's a little bit off, don't be around people. Don't expose those people because you don't know, you know, like that people think it's a joke. It's not a joke. It's, you, you know, you think you can be so lax until it's somebody that you know. And it's too late by then. I mean. And it's way too late by then. And you then. can't just be like, oh, hoops, because... I just I just want to add to to this if that's okay um, that I really I think is po- important pointing out here. So in the household, your friend and her wife are in their early forties. The wife yes. has stage four cancer, right? Yes. And the yes. elderly couple was your friend's parents that were living downstairs. Uh, yeah, yes. And the kids were, or we see like 18 plus, like in their late teens, early 20s. Yeah. And no, the only person that got um, a vaccine was her wife that has stage four cancer. And, you, yes. and, a, and her immune system would be very compromised. Oh, but, huge. But she's the only one that didn't get it, right? She, she actually did get it, um, but she didn't get it as severe and they, and they, like not even a little bit. Because they, she had the, she had some antibodies, right? Yes. So it, they did say it was because she had had the first vaccine. What pisses me off about so, this story is that the kids were running around like nothing was, like it was no big deal. Not even caring I, that there was a, their mom has stage four cancer and that they have two elderly grandparents, one with a uh, severe lung um, disease who I believe you said is intubated in the hospital now. Yes. And that just, I mean, it makes me so sick. I want to knock their fucking heads together because it's on them. If their grandfather dies, it's on yeah. them. If her, their mother had a past. And do they get it now? Do you know? Do they? Do they? Oh yeah, everybody's very yeah. They do get they, it. Are they remorseful? Um, that I don't. I haven't been around them enough. Okay, um, well, I, I guess like, not. I just think them. I'd like to think that be like, we're fucking pieces of shit, and now we're gonna like, you know, tell people that you know what I mean. Like we fucked up, and you got to do what you got to do now. Yeah, because they still need to wear masks. Yes. They still need to distance from people. Because what people don't get is that I'm wearing my mask to fucking protect your ass. And I expect you to do the same for me out of just humankind courtesy. So when you're not wearing your mask, you're like, fuck you, I don't give a shit about you. And then when you get it, you're potentially ending someone's life or giving them a long-term um, possible dis- disability. And at the very right. least, they they become sick, which no one wants. And America, I'm just so done with it because it's so... Toronto, the, our one big trauma center is Sunnybrook Hospital. It's just like yeah. one of the best hospitals around. And it, you know, uh, each hospital has their own um, expertise, but Sunnybrook is just like... Yeah, it's it's amazing, and uh, it's the biggest. It's our trauma center for, um, for a lot of things, and uh, there is like a tent city in the parking lot with what thirty, yeah. forty tents, hospital tents set up, and it looks and like how it did in New York. You know, when New York got nailed in, early on, um, that's what it what it looks like right now, and it's not just Sunnybrook; it's other hospitals, and even then. People are like, not going to be me. Yeah. 
Wait till you uh, fucking uh, stub your toe and uh, you want to go in and get your little boo-boo looked at and, you, and, and they, they, you know, you sit there for how long and could possibly get it. Like when I had my appendix out, there's no way I was fucking going to the hospital. No way. And then I was like, yeah, I think I need to go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I need to go. Yeah. <laughs> this is not getting better. Um, and I was treated quite rapidly, which I was so um, grateful for. Oh, God, yeah, you were. I was treated rap rapidly. I was... Um, I got, I got excellent care. All of that fast, like, everything that you did, like, everything that they did for you was pretty freaking fast. Yeah, and in the... Um, it was nowhere near, like, it, how bad it is right now. No. Um, and so I can't even, I can't even imagine, like, as, it, the place was spotless. And they were incredibly careful with everything they did. But eventually, people that work directly, just pure exposure, it doesn't matter how, like, gowned up you are. If you're blasted, I mean, you could have 100 sunproof uh, SPF on you every day that you go out in the sun. But... At some point, and during the, the long way, you're getting low grade exposure. So it puts, yes. and these these nurses and doctors are fucking exhausted, working twelve, sixteen, eighteen hour shifts, sleeping in their cars, going right back. And uh, yeah, well, Erica, well, Kieran, it was amazing talking to you. You too. I know and you gotta get some sleep. I will. And uh, that was fun. It was fun. We'll have to talk soon. Yes, please. So, uh, all right, Erica, say goodbye to everybody or see you soon. <laughs> that so was a good time. Bye. Bye. Farewell until we meet again. Do, 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 do. That's one thing I miss is singing with you. <laughs> I know. We got we to gotta write more songs, Karen. But when we get, when we're able to hang out again, we're going to be do it. We'll do a whole album, like a whole, we'll just, it'll be nothing but that. It will just be songs. Uh -huh. we'll, we'll record it. We'll put it on um, SoundCloud. People will catch on and they'll be like, wow, where have they been all our lives? They're amazing. I'm going to buy all of their albums. The problem oh. is, is that we're like ripping off all these other songs. We have to write our own. I know. Okay. Try, well, we'll talk to you well, soon. Yeah, you will. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. 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 <laughs> so I got to hang out a little bit on Skype with my awesome friend, Erica, who I miss dearly. Um, we miss doing these episodes together. So we'll, uh, we'll take them when we can get them. And uh, guaranteed... When all this shite is over, we are going to be back to our regular selves. Um, hopefully, this, uh, uh, whatever you want to call it, this pandemic bullshit, will be out of our lives, or at least we'll be able to spend a time around our loved ones and friends again. And before I go, I want to give out a big thank you to Bridget L88 and Sweet Lie for the amazing reviews you gave me on iTunes. I just, I get so excited when I see those and uh, it means a lot to, to me. And if anybody else feels free, um, feels free. If anyone else feels free to say I'm awesome, go ahead. <laughs> if you can stop by iTunes and, and give me a review, that would be awesome. And I want to give a big thank you to Karina Milani for becoming my newest Patreon supporter. Oh, that I really appreciate uh, everybody who supports me on Patreon. It helps out so much. I've been putting out some more contact, uh, contact content lately. And um, I have a new feature on there and it's called Gross Anatomy where you hear the uncut versions of um, some of the worst... Um, medical crimes in history. I do not hold anything back. So if you want to stop by and check that out and you're all welcome to join the Facebook page, as long as you're a cool person, um, jerks not allowed. <laughs> and, um, yeah, that's about it for today. 
I hope everybody is taking care of themselves and, and staying safe and taking care of each other and loving yourself. So until next time, peace, one love. Mm-hmm.